Aloha, welcome back. Thank you for sticking with me. Uh, like I said, uh, when those little advertisements come up, and if you want to watch them, go ahead. But uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you've probably seen them before or whatever. So you have four seconds, only three or four seconds, and you can just push it, skip the commercial, and it will skip it. And I appreciate you hanging with me because, you know, I'm not just doing this for entertainment or doing this because I want to be famous or anything like that. <laughs> but because uh, I believe God puts things in my heart. And I know he's called me to the ministry, no doubt. The Lord has used prophetic words in my life a lot uh, since I was a young Christian. And, uh, I mean, I have a journal full of them. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't write a lot of them down, but different times God has just used pr prophetic utterance in my life to, to speak to me and to encourage me. You know why he gave me so many? Maybe you don't have any. Maybe you only have one or two, or <laughs> maybe none, like I said. But uh, you know why he gave them to me? Because <laughs> I'm so special. No, it's because I went through a lot. And because I needed them, he, at times I needed a word. See, what the, the key thing about prophecy is this, is that the Lord gave us the word of God. There are some denominations, and I had, <laughs> I, I had a situation because I was from a Baptist church a long time ago from Kansas that uh, they just believed that once the, the Bible was printed, we didn't any longer need any gifts of the Spirit or anything like that. We just had the word of God. And thank God for the Word of God, the Scripture. Everything has to be compared to the Scripture. But the Lord does say that He gave some <laughs> apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, as I've said. But And so they're for the edifying of the body. And so sometimes we need that edification. You know, you go to the Scripture and you can find out that God's going to provide all your needs according to His riches and glory. You can go to the Scripture and find out that He wants to heal you have any disease or sickness. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases. So you can go to the word of God for that. Many other things, when you're going through certain things and you don't want to fear, you find scriptures that comfort you that way or, or whatever the situation is, there are, is a scripture for it. And uh, many times there's many scriptures. If you read the book of Psalms, you can see many things that, that David went through. And yet he, he cried out to the Lord and, and he was inspired and God put that as part of the scripture. And I use the Psalms a lot in my life. But you know, there's some things that aren't addressed in the so, word. The prophetic word comes in and is very important because many times you need that light in a time of darkness. Or God will give you vision through through prophecy he will help you understand where he's wanting to take you he says that uh, i know the plans i have for you says the lord plans of good and not of evil to give you an expected end so he's got plans for your life and he wants to do things but you know it'd be nice if we just go to the scripture and say okay god uh you know uh, let me find the book of larry here and see what it says for my life <laughs> No, the Lord will use scripture in your life and he's used many scriptures in my life. But there's times we need prophetic, specific prophetic words and it will encourage us and help us. And I'm not just talking about him individually. I'm talking about nations. And some people during this time of the election and everything, some people have gotten very faint and they've, they've kind of given up because they heard prophetic words and it didn't come to pass when they thought it should come to pass. But you know, there's prophecies in the Bible that still haven't come to pass. You know, you look at the whole book, a lot of the book of Revelation hasn't come to pass. You look at many things, hasn't come to pass. And can you imagine how long they waited for the Savior when it says in Isaiah 7, 14, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a child. <laughs> and his name, sh they shall call him. His name shall be called Emmanuel. Well, how, how long did it take for that to come to pass? You know, the e Egyptians had the Israelites in bondage for 400 years and they cried and cried and cried. Now, don't, don't get... <laughs> Don't get scared. I don't believe God's going to take 400 years to answer our prayers. But uh, I do believe, you know, many times we, we stop and we judge prematurely. And we shouldn't do that because God has things in the midst. And, uh, you know, you take the book of Esther. And that's what I said I would talk about. Because uh, this is Purim right now is when I'm sharing this. And Purim is the holiday they set up after the Jews were delivered uh, out from under uh, King Azurus. And the right-hand man, so to speak, was a guy named Haman. If you want to remember his name, just say, hey, man. <laughs> but Haman, Haman was exalted in a place right next to the throne. He was one of the, one of the people that, uh, you know, had favor with the king and was in a position there and lived in the palace. And yet he would pass every day in front of the palace or wherever it was, and uh, Mordecai didn't bow down to him. And uh, that ticked him off. <laughs> 
he, he, he wanted Mordecai to bow down. And uh, so, but he didn't do it. And so he got a hatred for Mordecai and he didn't like the Jews. And so what did he do? He started plotting and scheming. And the king gave him uh, authority and responsibility. And so he used that to plot against the Jews. And when he did that, uh, he even got the king's ring to stamp it. And he set a date that he would have all the Jews killed. Isn't that something? And so you know what? I want to just point out to you that that wasn't just a man doing that. That was this devil, the spirit of the devil. <laughs> because uh, for all through history, you've seen there's been an attack upon the Jews. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, after that whole incident, it happened where, you know, with the Nazis or with uh, Hitler. And so, and, and then you have the, the, you know, the Muslims and terrorists, you know, <laughs> they hate the Jews. And why is that? Is it because the Jews are so bad? No, they have a covenant with God. It's because there's a spirit behind it, the devil. And he hates what God loves. And, you know, it's like, in a way, sort of, if I compare it, it's like the mafia. It's like, uh, you know, if they can't get to you, they'll get to your children. And they can't get to God. Satan and his cohorts, they can't get to God. I mean, they can't. They're not more powerful than God. But God set this universe and this earth and, and uh, his kingdom with laws. And God made a covenant. And when man breaks that covenant, he opens himself up. And he's not under the protection of God. So that's why many things happen uh, on earth. And then God gets to a point where he does bring judgment. But you see, Haman... He hated him, and so he began to connive and set this word out, and he put a motivation with it. He says, you know, you can go kill the Jews on this particular day, and then you can uh, you can have all their goods, you know? You can drive away their Mercedes or whatever, their chariot with golden wheels or whatever they had. You know? And so it motivated all through the land. And yet, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but you really, if you haven't read the book of Esther, read the book of Esther. You'll see how powerful God is. And I'm going to tie it in now to how that relates to America right now. Because God wants to use people. He does use people. He used Moses. He used Joseph. He used Jesus. He used the apostles and the prophets. He, used, he uses people. He doesn't just come down and do things. He uses vessels on earth. And so what happened in that case, he used Mordecai. And what is astounding to me is that um, God planned this ahead of time. He knew what was coming down. And he, I believe somehow, uh, you know, if you know a little bit of the story, it's Vashti, King Azurus' queen. And, and they were having this party going on and celebration for 180 days. And they had all the kings, different kingdoms come in. And, and uh, King Azurus or Xerxes, if you want to call him that, he he, uh, he he wanted to impress everybody. He had everything just, I mean, it was so awesome. He had all oh, the tapestries and all this stuff and gold this and gold that and all this. And he had all these kings in there and stuff. And he, he, he just threw a feast, I mean, a party that wouldn't end. It was something else. And then people started saying, why don't you bring out Vashti? That was his queen because she's so beautiful. She was like the most beautiful woman in the whole land. But I think she was a member of the Women's Liberation Movement. Because, and she was, I don't I forget how long it says, maybe a week or a period of time when she was with the women. A lot of the women were in there. Who knows what they said, but <laughs> by the time she got called for to come out, she had an attitude. And she says, I don't want to go. Well, you don't say that to the king, okay? <laughs> and so I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but because I want to get to the main points. is that God had said in play that Mordecai would hear of this and, and Vashti got really banished from the kingdom and they after a few years they decided to you know some of the people wanted to comfort the king and they said you just need to get some virgins in here and we're going to pick you one to be a new queen and Mordecai I believe was led of the Lord he he had Hadassah which is uh, Esther before he changed her name he changed her name because he didn't want to be that evident that uh, she was a Jew and so anyway uh, she went through all the purification all that and finally she became the queen well, see, God set all that up ahead of time. Now, we wanted we wanted victory, we wanted it to happen right now. All of us did, you know, November 3rd. We wanted to get this thing over, we wanted to have victory, we wanted to go party. Wanted, I think if a lot of that happened, I think that we'd soon probably forget God, <laughs> honestly. Look what happened in 9-11. There was a resurgence of people to come back to the Lord, and, and a lot of people, you know, started going to church again. But it wasn't long, and they forgot. And it wasn't long when our... The morality of our nation has gotten worse. 
and they put certain people in office and they change the laws. And here we are today, it's getting worse and worse and worse. But see, because God's people have a covenant with him, and because we prayed and cried out, according to 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. So I don't believe God has given us up to the point to where, okay, I've had enough, I'm just doing it. I don't think that it's that right now. What I think is, is God's letting this play out just like he let the situation play out with uh, Pharaoh and Moses to where the point where Pharaoh followed him when they, he shouldn't have followed him. He had, he had already broke his word to God and to Moses and said he's going to let him go and he didn't. And so God hardened his heart and got to a place where God set it up where he would completely destroy the enemies of Israel and of the Jews. And that's all I believe is happening right now. I believe that things are being set up. And Lord, we'd like to get it over with them. We see a lot of things coming down the pike right now. But I, I stand on it because I stand on the fact that I believe he's still going to do what he said. Because the prophetic word went out from more than two or three witnesses. And that's what God says. He will confirm by two or three witnesses. And I just believe that that word is going to come to pass. I believe that. It's not something I'm trying to psych myself out. But, you know, we do need to encourage ourselves. We do need to remind ourselves of the Word of God. And if we didn't have prophetic words to stand on, I'll tell you the truth, we still have words. We have the Word of God. Like I said, Second Chronicles 7, 14. And there's other words. Call on me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things. He raises up one and sets down another. He's talking about the leaders. And so, you know, there's promises that we can stand in Scripture. But I tell you, if we didn't have those, some of those prophetic words right now to stand on, I think it would be tough for many. It would be tough for me. Because I would think, well, we just got to wait again. And I tell you, to, <laughs> I've been through this. And I think you've been through this before. This, different administrations came in, uh, in in the government in the United States. And things went downhill quick. And I, it's going more rapidly now. But I'm trusting God. I'm putting my faith and trust in Him. So what's the similarities between the time of Esther and Mordecai and, and King of Well, God set everything up. And I want you to read the book. Read it because it is so awesome and I can't explain it at all now but God's had Mordecai listen in on a couple of people at the gate that were going to kill the king and uh, he saved him from that and they wrote his account in the book but the king didn't read it until a certain night uh, it's just incredible what happened but God set it up to the point where the gallows that Haman made to hang Mordecai and the Jews and by the way Queen Esther would have been killed too because it would have came out that she was a Jew and, and the decree said they're going to kill all the Jews on a certain day. But God turned it around. The Bible says, Proverbs, he that diggeth a pit shall fall into it himself. And I've claimed that word over Trump. I've claimed that word over America. I've claimed that word over my own life. And so this is what happened with Haman and his whole family. He thought he was going to be exalted even more because Queen Esther had invited him in to a special banquet between him and with him and the king and and Esther, and uh, there's so much to the story. I mean, it's so awesome. I mean, Esther could have lost her head by going and approaching the king when she did. She had to pray and fast and ask for favor, and she just didn't wake up one morning and and you know didn't care about her hair and throw on a robe or something or a pair of shorts and go over and say, "Hey, king, I, I want to talk to you." No, there was protocol, and if she went there and the king saw her and he hadn't summoned her he could kill her but if he extended his scepter then he would hear her so that day she dressed up in her queenly apparel and uh, royal apparel and she went in there and god gave her favor and she was able to lay out what haman had done and in one day turned it all around and instead of the jews being killed haman was hanged and others too that tried to, they would not uh, stop persecuting or they went after the Jews anyway. And so those, those were killed too. And so, you know, God sets things up sometimes so that we can be rid of our enemies. We, we're not wishing that people would die or anything like that, but it's like this. some things have to be changed and sometimes you have to move people and get them out of the way. So, you know, we wish the best. We want everybody to be saved. That's what God wants. He wants everyone to be saved. And so this right now, I want to encourage you during this time of Purim. Purim uh, was established because God delivered the Jews during the time of Esther and with Haman 
and King Azuras. And so they set a holiday and they've been celebrating it ever since. So let's pray right now. And I just pray, Father, you'll just continue to give us understanding, enlightenment, and so that we will know, God, what you're doing in the land and that we will have patience and we'll wait on you. And not only that, just sit by and wait, but we'll continue to fight the good fight of faith and pray. I pray for every person that's listening right now or watching right now, that they would just, Lord, uh, be blessed that you, you would minister to them. Lord, just anoint them with oil. Anoint them with fresh oil and, and anoint them with fire, the baptism, the Holy Ghost, God. And if you haven't accepted Jesus, say simply right now from your heart. I tell you, when I prayed to receive the Lord, <laughs> I didn't really feel anything, but I meant what I prayed. And you just pray and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me for all the things I've done wrong. I've offended you. I ask you to forgive me. And I come to you now. And Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Father God, I believe Jesus died on the cross and he you rose him again the third day. And I receive him now as my Lord, my Master. I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. That I might have strength to live for you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Bless you folks. Be encouraged and, and realize what uh, this time, this couple of days here, Purim, Thursday and Friday what they mean and what it's the same God he says I am the God that changes not and Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever so just hold on to his promises and get in the fight you can just pray you can worship you can praise you can just wait for the Lord see what he wants you to do and don't lose heart continue to encourage yourself because God is still alive God's not dead. He's still alive and he's on the throne and we're putting our trust in him. God bless you. <laughs> I don't know if they say it this way or not, but happy Purim. <laughs> okay, God bless you now. Aloha. Lift up your heads for your redemption draws near. Heads up. <laughs>